Hey there, I'm Kat, and this is Brews and Reviews. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the finish the book tag, and I was tagged in this video by Mel from a book feed named Mel, and I actually don't know who the original creator of this video is because the original video seems to have been taken down. So if anybody knows, please let me know because then I can link it in the description below, but like, confused. Anyway, I'll leave Mel's video in the description below. So let's get straight into this tag. Question number one, do you keep a list of the books that you've read? I do keep a list, my comprehensive list is on Goodreads. I have all of the books that I think I have ever read on Goodreads and I think it's over a thousand. And the thought of moving it anywhere else actually kind of terrifies me because it's a long list. I use the yearly tracker for Goodreads so I can see what I read in each year, but I also track this in my bullet journal. At the back of my bullet journal I have a 2024 books read section and I separate the months by colours. Not sure how well you can see that, but essentially I just mark everything down in the year and I can check back through my bullet journals to see what I read in that year, which I think is quite a nice way of doing it. It makes me feel good about what I've read in the year and I can also access stats a lot easier that way anyway, so that's fun. Question number two, if you record stats, what stats do you record? All right, well, okay, uh, the bullet journal is coming in <laughs> coming in strong for this one because I track a lot of things. So I like to track the books that I bought. I'm, I'm doing okay for books, I've not bought too many. The books that I've read and what month that I've read them in and what format that I've read them in. Uh, I like to track how many pages that I have read because that's always good. It's nice to see what like average I'm doing, how many books that I'm reading per month, the average pages because if I've read fewer books in a month then I'm like oh but it's okay because there was like a thousand page book in there and that makes me feel slightly better about myself. I have like a ratings tracker, the age ranges that I'm reading, I have the genres that I'm reading and what months that I'm doing it in, the length and the format, so if it's audio or if it's physical and I count ebooks in my physical stuff. Then I also track things like if it has LGBTQ plus characters or uh, authors, BIPOC authors and characters, disability representation, mental health representation. I like to track those because I want to list what it is that is represented in them because I always find myself going, oh I know I read a book with like this representation and I can't remember the name of it so it's really nice to have that in a set place so that I get the actual name of what it is when it's fresh in my memory and I've written it down so I can, you know, I have a sieve memory so it's really good to have this. I track rereads, I've done quite a few rereads this year. I track my intimidating reads, which is basically anything that I find intimidating because I think it's nice to acknowledge that I have actually pushed myself in that area and I'm doing better now than I was last year so I'm feeling good about that. I track books that are over 500 pages or 15 hours of audio, just again for like the same reason as the intimidating books, but sometimes books can be intimidating but they're not long and they're intimidating for different reasons. I track the readathons I take part in, the buddy reads that I do, different reviews that I've been doing, uh, challenges that I'm in like the buzzword readathon challenge and the Aurelium year-long challenge, I can't remember what that's called. I also track the series that I'm halfway through, uh, or like partly way through, so the dark blue is if I read it in 2022 or before, the light blue is if I read it in 2023, and the green is if I read it this year, so I'm doing quite well. I track books that I've read that are friend recommendations, and other various things like TBR veterans, sci-fi books, book reviews that I've done. That is essentially all the tracking I do. I tend to do a lot of tracking. I feel like I have just spouted a bunch of things at you that I'm looking at, but I am a stats person and I really love finishing a book and going, oh, can I take it off this list and stuff? It just makes me feel really productive and I, I'm a list girl, apparently. Question number three is do you give star ratings for books and if so what do you score books out of and how do you come about this score? So as of last year I changed my rating system. So I have a DNF, one star, two star, three star, 3.5 star, four star, 4.5 star and five star. Now the reason that I don't have a 0.5 star system for one and two stars is that I so rarely rate books that are at that level and I don't really feel the need to give it like a 0.5 in that sort of setting. Whereas 3 and 3.5 and 4 and 4.5, there are so many books that I want to read that I just don't think fit directly in like a 3 star category or 4 star category and they're just like a little bit better than that and I want to give them that but they don't quite meet the next one. So I decided to give myself a little bit of like a leeway there. And I'm gonna be honest, my rating system is kind of just flying by the seat of my pants really. Like how do I feel when I finish the book? Do I just have like such a good reaction to it and I'm feeling like really emotional and I'm like yeah this is so good and I'm like wow this is gonna really stick with me and then I'm like five stars. 
did it not quite make it that far then I'm like okay but it was really good though I really really enjoyed it but it was something that didn't just quite push it over the line 4.5 stars was it a really good book but like not a favorite four stars was it good but maybe not necessarily to my liking in certain aspects but I can't really blame the book for it probably 3.5 stars was it good okay fine three stars was it actively bad in some way then it gets a two star was it really really awful one star was it like really really bad am i going to do a complaints with cat video about this it's a one star dnfs i don't give any star ratings to i just write a review and say that i dnf'd it at a certain point because i don't think it's really fair for me to affect a rating of something unless yeah i, I will give it a one star if I have made it to the end and that is my lowest rating technically so yeah it's kind of just vibes really <laughs> how I'm feeling unless there is actually something problematic in it in which case then I will lower the rating for that and explain that in a review that I write of it. Question number four do you review books? I do review books I have tried to actively review books a little bit more on this channel hopefully more coming soon I'm going to be making headway on the David Gemmell books. I promise, I really, really am. I'm gonna be trying in June. It's my one task that I'm really gonna to try to push through in June. I give little mini reviews in my wrap ups for each month on the channel. And I also write little mini reviews in Goodreads because I feel like it's good to have like a little bit of note on there about what I felt about it. And then, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Question number five, where do you put your finished books? With the rest of them. I don't have any special ordering system. They just, they just get back on the shelves where they live. Books that I have read and books I haven't read. They all live together in one intermingled system that makes sense in my head, but doesn't really look like it makes sense to anyone else. Question number six, how do you pick your next book? I don't really have a system for this. Is there a readathon going that I have to fit prompts to books to? That's probably how I'll pick a lot of books. Does someone want to do a buddy read with me? I'll pick that book. Have I got any random challenges going? I'll pick that book. Do I just really want to read a book? I'll, I'll read that book. I'm kind of a mood reader, but also I like a bit of structure, so <laughs> I don't really know. They just sort of fall into my hands and reading. Question number seven, do you have any other rituals for when you finished a book? Honestly, it's mostly just this book. I, I wrote a lot of things in this book and that's pretty much what it is. I add stuff to my regular bullet journal. This is like my stats tracker bullet journal, but I have like a regular bullet journal and I'll just say that like, oh, I finished a book today and then I'll write down the name of the book and what I rated it. And that's about it really. I don't, I don't really do much else than that. To be honest, I write a little mini review in another notepad. I, it turns out I'm just a notepad girly, honestly. Uh, who knew? At least I'm using the notepads, not just collecting them. I used to just collect, hoard notepads um but now i use them so that's good so yeah I, I write a little mini review so that i can actually do the goodreads review like a proper well thought out brain using review later and the ones in my little notepad journal are just like this book good and like any other random things that come into my mind it's not it's not real real words and question number eight who do you tag i honestly don't know who's done this tag so you know if you haven't done this tag you're tagged to do it and you feel like doing it, you're tagged. I really should actually look at who hasn't done tags before I, I get to this point where I have to start tagging people, but like, I'm sorry, I'm rubbish. Please do this tag if you would like to. So if you made it to this part in the video and you don't have anything else to say but you want to let me know you were here, then please leave me some sort of graph emoji. I talked a lot about stats and things that I track. So, you know, that would be great. And if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!